Hello, Grade 7 students. I am Ma'am Rona R. Fruto of Malinta National High School, your arts teacher for today. Join me as we discover the authentic and marvelous Philippine arts. Here are a few reminders that you need to observe in this learning engagement. First, be prepared. Get ready with your MAPE self-learning module, notebook, and ball pen so you can answer directly on your module and take down notes of important information. Second, seat properly and keep a good posture while watching. Third, avoid unnecessary comments like emojis or stickers that are not related in the discussion and activities. Fourth, be polite. Do not use unpleasant words in answering, asking questions, and expressing your thoughts. Lastly, be attentive. Participating in the activity and discussion will be highly appreciated. I hope everyone will be guided by the reminders to ensure order in our session. These are the competencies that you are about to learn in this video. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to analyze elements and principles of art in the production of one's arts and crafts inspired by the arts of Luzon, Highlands, and Lowlands. Identify characteristics of arts and crafts in specific areas in Luzon. Reflects on or derive the mood, idea, or message emanating from the selected artifacts and art objects. Appreciates the artifacts and art objects in terms of their uses and their distinct use of art elements and principles. Incorporates the design, form, and spirit of the highland and lowland artifact and object in one's creation. Traces the external and internal influences reflected in the design of an artwork and in the making of a craft or artifact. Before we begin, I want to assess your prior knowledge on our lesson. Let's have a short activity. You can participate by typing your answers in the comment section. This activity is entitled, What I Know. Choose the letter of the correct answer. I will be giving you 5 seconds each item to answer. Are you ready? Let's begin. Number 1. Act of putting together strips or strands of materials such as buri, bangkwang, and bamboo to make mats, baskets, and other household wares. A. Sinamay B. Weaving C. Stripping D. Panlinas The correct answer is B. Weaving Very good! Number 2 Hand molded pottery found in the Ilocos A. Maitong jar B. Manonggo jar C. Burnay D. Tiko If your answer is letter C, Burnai, then you are correct. Number 3. Bronze amulets worn by Ifugaos, which are fertility symbols. A. Malmag, B. Puso, C. Bakwat, D. Lingling O. Very good for those who answered letter D, Ling Ling O. Number 4. Hand-woven cotton textile of Ilocos region. A. Abel B. Patadyong C. Malong D. Panulo The answer is letter A, Abel. You are doing great. Number 5. The traditional Tagbanwa attire 
made of pounded bark of trees. A. Salunin B. Patadyong C. Bakwat D. Wanes You got it right! Letter D. Wanes Thank you for participating. You all did great! Filipinos from the region of Luzon are pleased to display their artistic creations of everyday objects, architecture, and sculpture. For you to become familiar of the provinces that we will explore, watch this short video clip of the most popular tourist destinations in Luzon. Our native Filipinos from Luzon are very artistic and expressive in showing their culture. Let us identify and analyze selected arts and crafts of Ilocos Region, Cordillera Administrative Region, Cagayan Valley, and Central Luzon. Lesson number one, arts and crafts of Ilocos Region and Cordillera Administrative Region. Starting with Ilocos Region. Vigan is one of the tourist destinations in Ilocos Region. It is also known as Intramuros of the North. Most visited architecture in Vigan is the famous Calle Crisologo. The distinct feature is the well-preserved grounds and pavements which are made from cobblestones. Look closely at the cobbled streets. Can you see the pattern on how it is arranged? They use cobblestones in different sizes and arrange it in a repetitive sequence. The Cali Crisologo was constructed during the Spanish era, and the cobblestones are still the original ones. Besides the cobblestones of Cali Crisologo, Spanish-type houses are also exceptional. The distinct feature of the Spanish houses is a huge and high-pitched roof and rectangular living rooms which are hardwood floors made of adobe, bricks, lime, and terracotta. The wooden window panels are made from capiz shells. These houses are not just for shelter but also function as shops and storage. Ilocos region is also known for Idabel, hand-weaven technique of the Ilocanos in making fabric. Inabel is also the term used for the fabric itself. One of the designs of Inabel fabric is the dizzying binacol design which represents the waves of the sea. Ilocanos believes that this design protects them from bad spirit. Inabel designs are also inspired by natural elements like different landforms, colors of the flowers, vegetation, plate, zigzags, animal patterns, the ocean waves, and the glittering night sky. Vegan is known for pottery. These jars are called burnai, an glazed earthen jar with a small opening. It is made of clay and commonly used for storage of water, rice grains, and container for salt, brown sugar, basi, a local wine, and bagoong, fermented fish. 
Have you been in Pangasinan? Bulinao mats are smoothly woven mats made from buri or raffia leaves from Pangasinan. The most desired is geometric patterns like zigzags and planes. Look at these images of women manually weaving mats. Before, when a man wants to court a woman, he must be able to learn preparing the fiber for weaving. Only then, the woman's mother would give permission for courting her daughter. Let's proceed to the arts and crafts of Cordillera Administrative Region. Kalinga are skilled weavers. One of their finest products is textile which are mostly red stripes with white, yellow, and black geometric patterns. This is an example of Southern Kalinga textile called kain. It is a wrap-around skirt or tapis. For Northern Kalinga, it is called saya, a woman's body clothing covering waist to feet. The colors of their textile have cultural meanings. Red for bravery, black for soil or land, white for flower of the coffee trees, yellow for sun, and green for mountains. This is lava, a bowl-shaped basket of kalinga made from rattan, and it is about 20 to 150 centimeters in diameter. It is a round or squared base basket used for carrying or storing rice or vegetables. I know you are familiar with this form of art. Batok or Kalinga tattooing is an ancient form of tattooing that is a bit more painful than modern methods. For Kalinga, tattoo is considered as clothing and decoration, which signifies a rite of passage from youth to adulthood, mark of heroism and bravery, or status in the community. These are common Kalinga tattoo designs, nature and geometric patterns, shapes and lines. Are you familiar with this woman? Very good! She is Apo Wang Od, the last Mambabato or traditional Kalinga tattoo artist. Tattooing in Kalinga is not just done by any person. It should run in their bloodline. Since Apo Wang O did not have any child, she is currently teaching her nieces to be a mambabato. The next art from Ifugao is a wooden sculpture that represents the rice gradery spirits called Bulul. Bulul has simplified head and a torso a pair of hands, and legs mounted on the platform for stability and sometimes with bone. Bulul is usually made from Nara, which signifies wealth, happiness, and well-being to the Ifugao. There are also Bulul that are made from Ipil Ipil and stone. Bulul is used in rituals that are performed to call the ancestors, to protect their rice fields from pestilence and to ask for an abundant harvest. Another sculpture of Ifugao is the Lingling O or Dinomo, a fertility symbol or amulets worn around the neck. Look closely at the design. It is around with a slit in the middle that looks like fetus or the lining of a mother's uterus. These are made from jade, gold, copper, bronze, stone, wood, and other materials. Moving now to Mountain Province, another manually woven textile called blue bead. The design includes an eye, man, lizard, star, variation, snake, butterfly, shield, spear, and flower design. Lubid is used as clothing for the natives in Mountain Province. Did you know that we also have mummies? These are called Kabayan mummies, also known as the Ibaloy mummies, Benguet mummies, or fire mummies. 
Kabayan mummies are mummified corpses of individuals from the higher societal stratum, known as Kadangyan. Close examination of the mummies revealed that they have body tattoos resemble to the patterns found in their textiles. The Kabayan mummies were declared National Cultural Treasure of the Philippines. People from Mountain Province are also skilled weavers. They weave their own textile for clothing. They have textile for different purposes. Here are some of the textiles from Mountain Province and their purposes. The traditional attire of men in Mountain Province is a G-string called Juanes. Juanes has two designs based on their uses. For ritual or ceremonies, a black wanes called finale is used. For burial, a white wanes called chinagta is used. Wanes designs are usually red with colored borders, dark blue or black with red stripes, and decorated ends, geometric lines, particularly zigzag. Women in Mountain Province have also a traditional attire called Luffy. It is a short and narrow wrap-around skirt for women. Married women in Mountain Province wear a belt called Ginaspala Wanes. These are adorned with designs composed of continuous zigzag patterns woven in double paste with braided warps that end as tassels. The native Bontok of Mountain Province create their textile patterns through the ikat weaving method. It is a process of tying and dyeing the threads to prepare the patterns before they are woven into the textile. Another art is the abro textile of tingians. Tingians weave textiles for clothing and blankets. They are noted for their white textile with horizontal stripes in the edges. We are done with lesson number one. Let's proceed to lesson number two, the arts and crafts of Cagayan Valley and Central Luzon. Starting with Cagayan Valley, where Cagayan River, the longest river in the Philippines, is found. Cagayan Valley is composed of provinces of Batanes, Cagayan, Isabela, Nueva Vizcaya, and Pirin. Batanes is the northernmost province in the Philippines. People living in Batanes group of islands are called Ibatanes. They are known for their unique architectural art, Ibatan houses. Since Batanes is sometimes affected by the entry and exit of typhoons in our country, their houses are designed to withstand the harsh environmental conditions. Even then houses have two feet thick walls and low ceiling with small door and windows. Even then houses are made of limestones for walls, reed and coven for roofs. Trivia, the oldest surviving Ivatan house which was built in 1887 is called the House of Dakai. Farming and fishing are the primary industries in Batanes. Ivatans created their crops to be used as protection from heat and rain. The headgear used by Ivatan women is called vakun, and the gear used by the Ivatan men is called soot. Vakul and soot are made from buyabuy plant. Watch this short video clip of making vakul and soot. Yan yung ginagawang bakul. Yes po, yun po. Ito po yun ma'am. Yung video pa, yung usbong pa. So, ito yan. So yung, yung mas mura pa siya, yun yung ginagawang ano, oh. da, material. So yung bakul na sinusuot, umabot po siya ng isang linggo na ginagawa ng isang tao lang. So medyo mabagal kasi yung manual siya paggawa pag, pag kahit tulad nung ginagawa ng bata. Yeah, mabagal lang siyang gawin. So binibinta nila yan 900 ang isa. So, yung 900, divide mo lang yun sa 7 days. Yung mm -hmm. 
Bakul din yan. Bakul din to. The next province to explore is Isabela, one of the largest provinces in the Philippines. Tumawini Church is a Roman Catholic parish church of San Matias Apostol, built in 1783. It is made of red bricks ornamented with carvings of flowers, leaves, scallops, saints, and religious symbols. Look at the cylindrical belfry of the church. What does it look like? Very good! It is like a huge wedding cake with laces, hearts, and beads. Another province known for the textile is Nueva Vizcaya. The gadangs of Nueva Vizcaya has a textile belt called Dakwat. It is used by gadang mothers after giving birth. It is adorned with white beads as accents embellished in patterns that represents rivers and mountains. Our last destination is the Central Luzon, the largest plain in the country and known for the provinces with authentic arts and crafts, starting with the province of Bulacan. Whenever there are festivals, fiestas, and grand celebrations in Bulacan, Singaban can be seen in the entrance of barangays. Singaban is the local term for bamboo arches designed with kayas or wood shaving. What Filipino delicacy of Bulacan is this? That's right, pastillas. Looks delicious. In Bulacan, pastillas are wrapped in intricately designed pabalat or pastillas wrappers. Pabalat is a paper cut graph with intricate designs. Usual designs are linear, curvilinear, and geometric designs with local floras and scenes of everyday rural life. Bulacan is also known for gold and silver jewelry industry, particularly in Mekawayan Bulacan and firecrackers in Bukawe. In Philippines, what season begins when Burman starts? Yes, Christmas season. It is a unique tradition for Filipinos. Pampanga is the Christmas capital of the Philippines. Why was it tagged as Christmas capital of the Philippines? It is because of its giant lantern or parol. Parol is an ornamental star-shaped Christmas lantern with unique designs of dancing lights in several shapes and colors that form intricate geometric pattern. Every mid-December, Giant Lantern Festival is held in San Fernando, Pampanga to showcase the giant parrots. Central Luzon is known for historical architectural landmarks built during the Spanish era, one of which is the Spanish Gate in Olongapo City, Zambales. The Spanish Gate was built in 1885, used as the main entrance and exit to the naval station. The gate was also used as jail during both the Spanish and the American occupation. This is the oldest Catholic church in Zambales, the San Andres Apostle Parish Church. It is a Baroque church in Masinloc, Zambales, founded by the Augustinian Recollects in 1607. The front church is divided in triangular pediments two horizontal sections, and three vertical one. The left portion is extended for the bell tower. San Andres Apostle Paris Church was declared as National Cultural Treasure in 2001. In Gapan, Nueva Ecija, the oldest and one of the biggest church is the Parish of the Three Kings. It is a Roman Catholic church built in 1800s. This church has a huge doorways, two standing images of patron saints 
on doorways and mural of the Holy Trinity on the ceiling. Last but not the least, the Abukay Church of the Saints Dominique de Guzman Parish Church, established in 1587 and administered in 1588 by the Dominicans in Abukay Bataan. This church is an example of Renaissance architecture because of its vertically single or double divided columns and triangular pediments. That ends our discussion, filled with arts and culture of selected regions in the soil. I know you are now ready for our activity. This is just a check if you have remembered the topics from our discussion. Imagine that you will be the representative of your class in a quiz B contest. How many arts and crafts of the soul will you be able to answer to win the quiz B? Choose the letter of the correct answer. I will give you 5 seconds to answer each item. You may write your answers on your map and notebook or participate by typing your answers in the comment section. Question number one. The dizzying binacol wheel in Inabel fabric represents the waves of the sea. What does this design mean? A. Bravery B. Bountiful harvest C. Protection from the bad spirit D. Social status Number 2. Bolinang mat is a product from Pangasinan. What plant is used in making this mat? A. Bamboo B. Palm leaf C. Raffia leaf B. Buyabuy palm Number 3. What is the rain cave? Worn by male Ivatans. A. Bakwat, B. Lufid, C. Soot, D. Vakul. Number 4. What is the traditional attire of men in Mountain Province? A. Bakwat, B. Inabel, C. Lufid, B. Wallis Number 5 Pampanga is known for its giant lanterns or parol. What is the distinct design of giant paroles? A. Animal patterns B. Dancing lights C. Flower pattern D. Ocean waves Let's check your answers. Number one, C. Protection from the bad spirit. Number two, C. Raffia leaf. Number three, C. Soot. Number four, D. Wallace. Number five, B. Dancing lights. How many correct answers did you get? You did great! The arts and crafts from Ilocos Region, Cordillera Administrative Region, Cagayan Valley, and Central Luzon are diverse, unique, and purposeful. Most of the arts and crafts of our native from Luzon reflect the unique culture and traditions of different tribes, like the designs of their textiles. There are also arts that have traces of influences from our colonizers. Also, most of the arts and crafts were created to make the lives of our native Filipinos convenient. You see, our native Filipinos from the Luzon have really showcased their unique arts and crafts based on their culture, 
beliefs, and traditions. To enhance your knowledge and skills, answer the activity in your module entitled What's In. In Activity A, you are going to describe the following textiles by completing the table. The two textiles are locos and cordillera textiles. Describe the pattern, designs, and materials used in these textiles. In Activity B, complete the chart of the following churches from Isabela, Nueva Ecija, Bataan, and Zambales. Fill in the missing details in the chart. Then submit it to your map teacher. I am sure that your map teacher pretty much willing to assist you. May you realize the importance of arts and crafts in enhancing and promoting Philippine culture, heritage, and identity. Thank you, Grade 7 students. Once again, this is Ma'am Rona R. Fruto. Keep safe and have a productive day.